Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do kind of an unboxing and a detailed review all in one on this brand new Mainstays 12 cup programmable coffee maker from Walmart. This coffee maker has been kind of elusive. It's kind of hard to find at the Walmart store. They really don't have the space for it on the shelf yet and you got to kind of really look. I think they just released it in April of 2021. It's $20. So this is kind of an, they've upped their game for Walmart brand. This is a programmable. Uh, they've got 12 cup coffee makers, but they, I don't know if they ever had a programmable one. So let's open it up and see what we get. So it's got an instruction manual right on the top. Okay, it's all in one big plastic bag. Okay, so there's a couple pieces of foam. There's a piece of foam there and a piece of foam there. So this does have a warming plate. Let's look at the coffee pot. This is a little different design. It's got a different feel to it. It's got a hinged lid. Big enough to get your, well, sort of get your arm in there. It does come off. So that's nice. It's got a good feel to it. Again, it is a 12 cup coffee maker. The control panel looks really nice. It's got a it's got a heavy plastic feel to it, so it's all plastic, but there is a sight glass on the side to check the water level just on one side. Okay, so we lift it up. It's a basket style filter. There's your basket um, filter. This is where you put the filter. This is your basket, kind of like your filter holder. There's where the water goes in the back. I don't see any type of water filtration you can use. There's the brew head. It's got a nice big opening to pour the water in. The brew basket, it's got a big letters that says back. And this is, you know, When you get it just right, then the lid will close. So it feels nice. Around the back, if you overfill it, that's where the water will come out. It's got cord storage. And it's got a two-prong cord, looks to be about two feet. Front to back, you're about nine and a half, almost 10 inches. Side to side, you're about six and a half inches. And so I get this question a lot. It will not fit under a standard kitchen cabinet. So these kitchen cabinets are 19 inches and that lid is about 22 inches tall It's about 12 inches tall without the lid open But you do have to get you have, do have to open the lid so that you can pour the water in and get to the coffee filter and everything But it's light enough, you know that you can pull it out From a kitchen cabinet when you need to use it Okay, so I've got it plugged in um, the display looks really nice I got some lights on, but it's it's not super bright, but it's not dim, but you can see it from kind of far away. So that's really nice. It's got a so hour and minute, you can program the clock. That's how you turn it on. The only indication you got is a little power light there. You do have a bold setting, which has a, like a little coffee bean, and you can program this to come on in the morning with the program button. And it's got a little clock symbol there. So again, all in all, it's it's a pretty lightweight coffee. There's not much to these. You know, these mainstays are made pretty cheap, but this one feels pretty nice. The only problem I was having is, you know, the lid. Not really a problem. You know, you just gotta make sure you push it down and snap it. It does have a little snap there. Again, it does have a warming plate that's gonna keep your coffee warm. And it does have pause brewing. So there is a plunger. So anytime the coffee pot is in, it's gonna push that plunger up and allow the coffee to come out. When you take the coffee pot out, then that plunger comes down and stops the coffee from coming out. It's got an, it's got an instruction manual it comes with. Pretty decent. I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna do another video on how to descale it. This, I'm gonna also gonna show you how to set the um, auto brew. So it's pretty well written, 
pretty nice. Setting the clock, hints and tips, cleaning and maintenance. So yeah, this is a very nice manual. So anytime you have a brand new coffee maker, it's a good idea to wash this with soap and water. Wash the filter basket with soap and water. And then don't put a filter, don't put a uh, coffee in or anything. Just run a pot of clean water through. Fill this up to the max line and put the water in the back and put your pot down here and just and turn it on and just run fresh water through the coffee maker kind of cleans out the inside and everything then the coffee maker is ready to use so again this takes basket style coffee coffee filters 8 to 12 cup you know they got the white ones or the brown ones these are unbleached but it's the same thing basket 8 to 12 cups so I get this question a lot too it's rated at 900 watts, 120 volt, 60 hertz. So back up here to the brew basket. Now, it does not come with a reusable coffee filter, but you can put a reusable coffee filter in here. Or you can use a paper filter. I like to use paper filters. They're just a little easier to clean up. Paper filters do prevent sediment. You do get a little bit of sediment when you use a reusable coffee filter. Just only use one type of filter. Don't use the reusable filter with a paper filter. So it's either or inside the brew basket. So just put your coffee filter in there. Make sure it's kind of hugging the walls like that. Now this coffee maker recommends one tablespoon of coffee grounds. So it takes normal coffee grounds for a drip coffee maker. They're ground at a medium grind. So since this is a 12 cup, I can put 12 tablespoons of coffee grounds. So I'm going to do a maximum. I'm going to do the full 12 cups. If I was only going to do a six cup, a half a pot of coffee, I would just put six tablespoons in. And I can vary this any long, anywhere along the way between four and 12. They don't want you to do any less than four. And then that's the amount of water I'll put in the back. So how much ever water I put in the back is how much it's going to brew. So let's put 12 tablespoons of coffee. You're just going to put it right there in the middle. One, two. Okay, so I've got 12 tablespoons in the coffee basket, in the filter basket. Now I need to go fill this up to the 12 mark with just water. You can use tap water, bottled water, or filtered water. They don't want you to use distilled water. Distilled water doesn't have minerals in it that your coffee needs to taste good. Ever wonder why coffee pots have a hinge lid? I think it's so you can fill it up with water easier. Otherwise, you're trying to get it in that little hole. Okay, again, I've got, I'm gonna do 12 cups. I've got this filled up to the 12 mark. If I was only gonna do six cups, I would just fill it up to the six mark and then put six tablespoons of coffee grounds in. So the area you're gonna put the water is back here. There's two sides, you can pour it on either side. Coffee pot pours pretty good. You don't want to overfill this because it will leak out the back. Okay, we've got our water in. I'm going to put that back. I can verify the water. It's almost to the max. I could have put a little bit more in. but Now again, whatever water I put back here, it's going to brew that whole amount of water. So again, if I only filled it up to the 6, it would only brew 6 or 8 or 10. So since I got it up to the 12, it's going to brew the whole 12. Okay, so we want to close the lid. Be careful because the hot water is going to come out this brew head right here. And I'm simply going to press the on-off button. That starts the brew process. The little light comes on and it should start brewing. Okay, so we can hear it. It has started to brew within a minute. So again, it does not come with a filter. You'll have to buy some filters and some coffee when you first buy this coffee maker. So I've turned my lights off. You can see the display is very nice. And again, the only indication you got that it's brewing is this little light. There's no other really lights. I might have liked to have seen a little more bigger light or something, but that's the only indication you got that it's on. And it's gonna keep the warming plate on when you're done with your coffee. So I don't recommend lifting this lid while it's brewing, but we're just gonna take a sneak peek. Okay, there's what the hot water's coming out. It's saturating the coffee grounds. 
So the manual does say, so once it's done brewing its pot of coffee, it will keep the warming plate on for two hours and it will shut the warming plate off automatically after two hours. So it's been about four minutes. We're at the four cup mark. This is about standard. It's about a minute a cup it takes to brew. Let's take a look. Okay, so the coffee grounds are not overflowing. That's good. It's doing a good job up there. It's got a nice smell to it. I don't smell any type of plastic or anything. It smells like coffee brewing. And it does have pause brewing. So say I want to get a I want to grab a quick cup of coffee. I can pull this out. I can pour me a cup of coffee. You might get a couple drips, but that plunger comes down, stops the coffee from coming out, but then when I put the coffee maker back, it resumes filling the coffee pot. So I have to say I am impressed. It's not overflowing the the filter basket as of yet so it's doing a really good job there the coffee maker is not super loud you just hear it kind of heating that water and then it's shooting it up the, the brew head so it's not super loud I'm not getting a bunch of steam now this is hot you don't want to touch this but towards the end of the brew I'm gonna get a bunch of steam up around here so I'm gonna try something a little different I'm gonna try to get the temperature of the water at the top of the coffee maker about 178, 180 right as it's coming out of the brew head. Okay, it's getting towards the end of the brew process. I am getting quite a bit of steam coming out the back here. It never was super loud. I've still got a little ways to go. It's been about 11 minutes. Again, I don't recommend doing this. This is extremely hot. But there's the filter and the coffee grounds. So even though it's done, it's done brewing all the water, the water is completely out of the coffee maker, it's still got a little bit to drain out of that coffee basket. But again, we're almost up to the 12 mark. So I don't see any coffee grounds in the coffee, so it did a really good job that way. Let's see how it pours. Let's check a temperature of the coffee. Pours really good. I'm impressed. Some things don't pour very good. Fits back in the coffee maker just fine. Let's check a temperature real quick. 160. A coffee co cools off so quick, but 160, that's pretty good. 163. Okay, so I have to add a little cream and sugar to my coffee. This tastes really good. I'm very impressed with this coffee maker. I don't have any coffee grounds in my coffee. It, it makes a really hot cup of coffee. Not the hottest I've ever seen, you know, 165, but um, it tastes really good. So now, it's done brewing coffee. Again, it's going to keep the warming plate on. Now the display, I should have showed you this earlier, but when it's brewing, it shows the time. After it's done brewing, it's got, it's got a countdown timer. It's going to say, so you have two hours left on this. Then it's going to go to one point. It doesn't do every single minute. The next one it shows will be 1.5 and then one hour. So that's how long the coffee's like. It's going to stay, it's going to keep the warming plate warm for two hours. So after a half hour, this will say 1.5. It'll say you've got 1.5 hours left of keeping the coffee maker on. And the way I know it's on is so that little power light is on. And again, after the two hour countdown, it will shut the warming plate off and your power light will go out and the coffee maker will be safe. It won't be on anymore. Okay, so again, be careful. Let's lift this up, see how it did. Now, I think it did a really good job with the coffee grounds. It didn't overflow the basket. The coffee grounds do get pretty high in the basket, but it does not overflow. So say you're done, say you get your three or four cups of coffee out and you're, there's still a little bit left, you can go ahead and turn it off now. And the way you turn it off is just turn it off manually. Hit the power button, the little power button goes away, or the light, and it goes back to time. So again, this took about 11 to 12 minutes to do a 12 pot of coffee. That's, that's about standard for a drip coffee maker. Let's go over cleanup. You're going to want to wait till this cools. But it does have these nice ears, these little things to grab onto, or you can grab onto this. And then that plunger is going to come down. So you can take this over to the trash can and dump it out, and it's not going to drip on you. That's really nice. So cleanup is pretty simple. Again, I just dumped that out in the trash can. You can rinse this out. About every third or fourth time, I put this in the dishwasher top rack. Same with this. It's got this lid that comes off. Now, you got to, it only is, 
it's got an opening on one side. So you got to kind of tilt it. And then it'll come out. There's not an opening on both sides. And then to put it, this is dishwasher safe. And same with the coffee maker, top rack dishwasher. So now I'm going to show you how to set the clock and the program. The program is to come on in the morning. After I do that, I'm going to do a bold brew. And again, I'm going to do a separate video on how to descale it, how to run white vinegar through it. That'll be a separate video. Okay, so setting the time is very simple. But if you mistakenly hit these buttons, you got an hour button and a minute button. But if you mistakenly hit these, it changes the time really quick. So be careful when you're pressing around these buttons. So it is, the, the display has an AM and a PM light. That's really nice. So right now it is four, and then use the minute button. It's 4.45 p.m., okay? So again, that's really nice, but if you accidentally hit those, it will change the time. Okay, so now let's say you want a pot of coffee. Again, you can have this brew any, any size of pot, between four and 12, to have ready for you in the morning. Make sure you've got your water and your coffee ready to go like you were gonna brew a pot of coffee right now. But what you're gonna come up here and do is hit the program button. Okay, so when I hit the program button, the display changes and I got a little clock symbol that's flashing. So now I'm gonna set the time that I want it to come on in the morning. I want it to come on at five. It's got AM and PM, so make sure you're in AM. I want it to come on at five, and then do the minutes, five, 15 AM. Now, if I wanna do bold setting, I can press the bold setting now, but I just want a normal pot of coffee. Then you gotta press the program button one more time. Okay, now it re reverts back to the normal clock and the little program light is on. I don't know if you can see that. But that's the only indication you got that you're in program mode. Say you want to sleep in, you want to cancel it, just come up here and hit the off button. Now say the next day you want to, you, you know the time is set. Let's say you want to, okay, yeah, that's when I want to program it. 5.15, the light's flashing. But I can't, I gotta do one more thing. I gotta hit this program button one more time. That kind of sets the program. So make sure you hit that button twice. Again, you're just gonna hit the program button, change your hours and your minutes. You've gotta hit the program button one more time. So that when you go to bed, you're gonna wanna make sure you see that little program light there. Don't You don't have to turn it on or off. That cancels it. So when you go to bed, just that little clock symbol. And this thing will start at that time that you have programmed in. Make sure you've got your water and your coffee ready to go. Okay, so now we're gonna do a bold setting. We're gonna do a bold pot. I'm only gonna do six cups this time. So I got this filled up to the six. I got my filter in there again. I'm gonna do six tablespoons of coffee. Okay, so I got my six tablespoons of coffee in. Again, I've just got this filled up to the six mark. I'm gonna pour it in. I'm gonna put it down here. I'm gonna close the lid. Now I wanna press the bold setting. I gotta first cancel that program, but press the bold setting. The only way you know you're in bold is you got a little coffee bean. Then I'm gonna start the brew right now. And again, my water sight glass is up to six, so it's, only, it's gonna brew whatever water I put in here. So it'll brew that whole six cups of water. So it starts brewing right away but it's gonna take a little bit longer to brew. When they do these bold brewings, they just kind of, you can see, okay, see it started and it kind of pauses just for a little bit. So you may think the coffee maker has stopped, but it's just pausing to kind of extend the brew time. They say that that enhances the coffee flavor. And again, while it's brewing, the, the bean light is still on and the power light. And again, it's just kind of taking its time brewing. It does take a little bit longer. When you do a full 12 pot, it takes about four to five minutes longer. So here's how it's doing brewing with the bold setting. Yeah, it's doing a really good job. Okay, so that took about eight minutes to brew it on the bold setting. Again, it just kind of takes a little bit longer. So let's pour a cup of the bold setting. So with these bold settings, I do notice it does taste a little bit stronger. 
Um, not a ton, and again, I'm not a coffee expert by no means, but it does taste just a little bit stronger. But I don't know if it's worth the extra time or not, because most mornings I'm in a hurry, and I don't like to wait that extra four or five minutes. But if you've got the time, the bold setting is a is a nice way to brew a pot of coffee. And again, right now I'm I'm displaying the clock, but in here in just a minute, it's going to display a countdown timer. It's going to show you how much time from two hours is left for the warming plate to stay on. Now when it's brewing the bold setting, the temperature is not any different. It's still the same temperature that it brews it at. It just slows the process down. So again, when you're done, when you want to turn it off, it will turn off after two hours, but if you want to turn it off, just hit the off button. The bold setting stays. So the next time you turn it on, it's going to do a bold setting. So that's kind of nice. It memorizes the bold. So if you don't want to do a bold, you got to hit that button and then do another, then do your next brew. So I've been drinking this coffee for just a little bit now. It, it's actually a really good coffee maker. I am very impressed. I gave it my Just a Dad sticker seal of approval um, for $20 from Walmart. I wish Walmart would kind of display this, but I know when things are new at Walmart, they kind of, it takes a while for them to kind of get the display built and, and set up and get the inventory in. But again, this I, this showed up online and I'm like, what? Mainstays has a new coffee maker? And it said my Walmart had them and I went in there and I couldn't find it. So I had to go to another Walmart and I found it just sitting on a, a spot that really wasn't made for it. So kind of elusive right now, but I think it's gonna be a really good coffee pot. Um, I definitely, for $20, you know, and I've had other mainstay coffee makers and they seem to last a while. Again, my next video right after this, I'm going to show you how to descale. Now, this doesn't have any way of showing you that it's time to descale. There is no clean light or anything. But uh, it is good to keep up on descaling your coffee maker. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Really appreciate everybody's support. And if you could, please like and subscribe.